Hey guys, AJ here from 3D Printing Systems again. Another maintenance video for you today. We're going to look at replacing the black FFC cable on your Upbox 3D printer. Right now this cable controls the Y-axis motion and the Y-axis limit switch as well. Right, so situations where you might need to replace this cable are if you're getting an issue with a motion error uh, with the limit switch on your Upbox 3D printer or the letter P lighting up red uh, or if you're having issues with the Y-axis motor not working or not moving at all. Alright, so the first step in this process is to remove this back panel here. Now we've got eight silver screws that we need to take out. Now you should have received an Allen key with your upbox that will fit these screws. Or if you've got access to a handheld drill, that'll be a lot easier if you've got the right attachment. Make it a lot quicker to take these out. So we're just going to remove all of these screws first. Alright, so now that we've got all our screws out, we can remove the case. So it should just pop off. You might need to wiggle it out. And once we've got the case off, we've got a quick cable coming from here, our power cable. So we'll just pop that out as well, make our printer easy to work with. So the next thing we want to do is remove the side panel. So we're going to start by removing these three screws here. Alright, now that we've got the screws at the back off, best to move your printer to the edge of a table here. Note where the rubber feet are, make sure they don't slip off the table to avoid having your printer drop off. And we need to remove these three Allen key screws and you'll have a Phillips head screw at the front as well. Right. All right, so the last screw we need to remove is this black one here. So once we're taking this off, hold on to the side panel just in case it does come loose, just to make sure that it doesn't drop away. So we'll take that screw out there. Now that we have that screw out, we can take the side panel off. All right, so now that we've got all of our screws out, we can take the side panel off. Note that we've got the spool holder cover off. That's just gonna make it easier to lift this out of place. And it should come out quite easily. And behind here, you'll find that we've got a button board and some wires that we need to unplug to release this, this fully. All right, so here's the plugs that we need to take out of this button board. So one by one, trying to pull on the cables only, or not the cables rather, just the connectors. And there's four here that we have to remove. All right, once we've got those out, the whole panel should come away, and underneath we'll have exposed the FFC cable, the black cable that we're attempting to replace. So now that we've got our black FFC cable fully exposed, we're going to start on working on getting the cable out so that we can put our new one in. So we'll start at this end at the back of the printer, on this little circuit board, and we'll release the cable from this black slide clip. Now just using your fingernail or thumbnail to pop the clip out, and that should release pressure on the cable. No, just use that there, there we go. All right, and once we've got that off, removing the cable, we'll slide it out from underneath that black clip there, and come around behind the feeder tube, and then we have to remove it from this clip here. There's a couple of screws on the other side that we'll need to undo. All right, so the two screws that we need to undo are just back here to release it from the clip on the other side, so we'll take those out now. Alright, so we've taken the screws out of the other side of this clip, so that clip now comes all the way out and you can see that the cable is just inserted on the other side, so we can pop that out of there. Now just take note of how this clip was sitting before, because we'll need to put it back in the same way. Alright, don't worry too much about the bends, because we'll look at copying how these bends are done with our new cable before we put it back in. Next thing we need to do is take the cable from out from here, which is directly where the motor is plugged in, so we've got two screws just underneath that we need to take out. All right, so we've undone the screws. We're gonna take this black clip out. It should slide out of place. Again, just noting how, that it, how it was sitting in so that when you take it out next, or we'll put it back in next, you notice which way it goes. And with this, it's just held in by that black slide clip again, same as it was at the back. So I'll get my screwdriver in there to help release that clip and then we should be able to pull out the cable. All right, so we've got our new cable, but notice that it doesn't have any bends in it. So the easiest thing to do is to copy the bends that are already on the old cable, and it'll make the new cable a lot easier to insert. All right, so I find the easiest way to do this is just to put the new cable over top of the old cable and use the folds as a guide to fold it all in the same places. So we've got this one fold at the end. If we can follow it along, we'll see another fold just over here.
All right, so we've installed our black ribbon cable. Again, we've done this by noting how it was put in the first place. So just as a brief overview, plugging the black cable in behind the printer using this black slide clip and then pushing it back in to slot it into place. Coming behind this clip over here, we've got our folds all pre-folded. That's made it a lot easier. Slotting it in behind the uh, feeder tube just over here, or the feeder tube mount. Coming in behind this black clip, remember there's two screws in behind here that hold this clip into place. And then lastly, coming back up inside here to be clipped onto the circuit board, again held in by that black slide clip. Now that we've got all that done, we just want to move the print head back and forth. You can see the stretch in the cable, making sure that it's got free movement and it isn't putting any tension on the cable when it is moving. Now if you've got it to the forward position and there's a lot of tension here, it means your folds aren't quite in the right place and you may need to remove the cable and refold it, again using the old cable as a guide. Alright, so now that we've got our black cable installed, we want to put our side panel back on. So the first step in that process is to plug in all of our cables over here, so there should be four of them. Now. We've got the rainbow cable here. These should only plug in one way. You've got to be careful with these light cables. And just look at the folds in the cables to check where they go. And lastly, our door cable over here. There we go, back into place. And we'll slot the panel back into place. And we'll start putting our screws back in. Right, so the first screw we're going to put back in place is this one on the inside of the printer. Now you need to hold the panel on the outside so it doesn't drop away. Little black screw. And we'll screw that all the way in. Alright, so next we're going to put in the four screws on the bottom side of this panel. Again, if you move your printer away from the sur side surface of your table, uh, be careful of these rubber feet and make sure that they don't slip off the table, otherwise you risk your printer falling. So we'll start with this one over here, that's our Phillips head screw. Again making sure it's finger tight, and the next three are going to be the Allen head screws. Alright, coming down to the back panel of the printer, we've got these screws here that we need to pop back in place, and then we'll put the back panel back on. Alright, to put the back panel back on, first we need to plug in the power cable. So that's these two plugs here. So we'll pop them straight back into place. And make sure they're pushed all the way in. And next, we need to slot our panel on. So start by angling it towards the bottom, making sure it's over these screw holes here. And then push it back into place. Next, we'll put in our screws. Now you'll find that you have two longer screws and all the other ones are shorter. The two long screws go here, one in the top centre and one in the bottom centre. Now that we've got our printer all back together, just one final test to make sure that this black cable is in place properly. Again moving the print head all the way back and all the way forward along the x-axis, just making sure that there's no catching of that cable. Now the next thing to do is to start at your printer and begin a test sprint to make sure that everything is functioning correctly.